I'm happy to speak at YASET's International Investment Summit. International investors will be the main catalyzers of the European Grain Deal on the global scene. We will make changes happen together with you. The global economy faces many challenges today. The health crisis caused by the pandemic quickly evolved into a worldwide economic downturn. No country is immune to this wave of recession. The IMF predicts that about 170 countries in the world will see a decrease in income per capita in 2020, with some countries more impacted than others. In fact, many of the challenges related to climate change, depletion of resources, social and economic inequalities had already been present before the pandemic erupted. But the pandemic worked as an accelerator on our key problems requiring urgent and determined actions, as well as joint efforts to tackle these global challenges. The European Green Deal package was already under preparation in order to address the multitude of challenges well before the pandemic. The EU and its member states have already committed to deliver on the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainability Development Goals. The EU has demonstrated that climate action and economic growth can go hand in hand. This is very important and create many opportunities like creating new sectors and green jobs. Between 1990 and 2018, EU greenhouse gas emissions were reduced by 23%, while the economy grew 61% over the same period. Also during the pandemic, the EU and its member states have not forgotten our long-term commitment. While taking measures to mitigate the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19, we have focusing on how to return to the path of sustainable and inclusive growth and to ensure a fair recovery on the path to climate neutrality by mid-century. The implementation of the European Green Deal, the strengthening of the single market and its adaptation to the digital age constitute the core of the EU recovery plan. The European Green Deal is the EU's long-term recovery plan with comprehensive multi-layered components covering many fields of intervention from energy to biodiversity, from agriculture to trade. As President Ursula von der Leyen said, this is the motto of EU's recovery. The Green Deal announced last year is a set of concrete measures aiming to transform the EU into a climate neutral continent by mid-century. I should emphasize that the European Green Deal is not just a climate or environmental deal. It is the EU's new growth strategy to reach a carbon neutral European economy. It addresses all the pressing challenges within the EU like economic growth, energy, food security, climate change or biodiversity loss. Considering that the EU economy, quite similar to the Turkish one, relies on foreign energy resources and raw material imports, reducing its dependence on foreign markets for such essential ingredients is a wise strategy. Therefore, the Green Deal objectives on deployment of renewable energy, energy and resource efficiency and circular economy all make sense economically. Solidarity is at the heart of the European Green Deal, both in Europe and with our partners around the world. The European Green Deal is an integral part of the EU strategy to implement the United Nations 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. Indeed, these goals will not be achieved by Europe acting alone. The drivers of climate change, resource depletion, biodiversity loss, are global and are not limited by national borders. There is no point in reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the European continent only if we increase the import of carbon dioxide from abroad. Therefore, international cooperation is a must. 
Solidarity is the heart of the European Green Deal, both in Europe and with our partners abroad around the world. The Green Deal will lead the global fight against the climate crisis by presenting a roadmap for concrete actions that we hope can serve as an inspiration for our international partners too. However, for the deal to work properly and make everybody better off, cooperation and help from all partners is needed. The deal will require substantial public investment and increased efforts to direct private capital towards climate and environmental action. As a part of the Green Deal, the EU will be undertaking a range of actions to support the transition to a circular economy as well, which implies that new standards and norms will be determined as regards the production and consumption cycles and waste management. The business world will be thus affected by this transition to a circular economy as companies will need to adapt and to invest into a more sustainable business model. Mobilizing EU funds is a necessary but not sufficient step. We also require an enabling framework to ensure that further public and private investment follow the current. In 2018, the EU adopted a sustainable investment action plan with the aim to standardize what green investments are and to underline the necessity of green investment by private sector and investors to cope with the climate crisis. The Sustainable Europe Investment Plan is the investment pillar of the European Green Deal. A sustainable European requires significant investment efforts across all sectors of the economy. Reaching the 2030 climate and energy targets will require additional investments of 260 billion euro a year by 2030. The Sustainable European Investment Plan will enable the transition to a climate neutral green economy across the following three dimensions. First, the plan will mobilize at least 1 trillion euro of sustainable investment over the next decade through the EU budget. This means an unprecedented amount of public spending will go to climate and environment, exceeding any previous investment in this sector. The European Investment Bank will become the Union's Climate Bank. It has already announced it will gradually increase the share of its financing dedicated to climate action and environmental sustainability to reach 50% of its operations in 2025. We expect this action to result in a massive crowding in of private funding through the mechanism of guarantees. The EU will, on the other hand, use its public sector investments to limit the negative aspects of the transition in the most affected regions through the Just Transition Mechanism. The Just Transition Mechanism will address the social and economic impact of the transition on the regions, industries and workers who will face the greatest challenges it is expected to mobilize at least 150 billion euro. The mechanism will use three sources of financing, its own purpose-built fund, the EU Invest Portfolio and the EIB lending. Second, the investment plan will create an enabling framework for private investors and the public sector. Financial institutions and private investors need to have the tools to properly identify sustainable investments. Notably, the EU taxonomy, the energy efficiency first principle and sustainability proofing will be the investors key tool sets. To this end, the European Commission has announced a renewed sustainable finance strategy to further develop these policy tools. The EU taxonomy regulation has been published in June this year. It established the criteria for determining whether an economic activity or investment qualifies as environmentally sustainable. In parallel, the Commission is working on the development of a voluntary EU green bond standard and of an EU eco label for retail investment products. We are working on several other mechanisms to incorporate sustainable investment concepts into the work of asset managers and institutional investors via prudential requirements, financial advice mechanisms, 
and corporate reporting. All this work is done in collaboration with a platform of sustainable finance established by the European Commission. This platform consists of business organizations, NGOs and financial institutions. Business Europe is also a member of this platform. I know that several YASET members are also members of TUSIAD, and TUSIAD is a member of Business Europe, hence through your gateway to European business, you can also be indirectly involved in this work. Finally, the third dimension, the plan will provide tailored support to public administrations and project promoters in identifying, structuring and executing sustainable projects. For this, we will mainly use the service of the InvestEU Advisory Hub and the advisory initiatives developed under the InvestEU program. As you can see, the investment environment is rapidly changing and the rules of the game are also changing. And this change is inevitable because of the urgence of the climate-related challenges we face. You saw the appeal of the Secretary General of the United Nations at the beginning of this week. Given the global character of these challenges, these change in mentality and working methods need to be spread across the global supply chains through our trade and investment relations. Even before the European Green Deal, EU had been a global leader in making its trade policy climate and environmentally friendly. It goes without saying that trade policies will have to play an active part in supporting the EU's ecological transition. The EU is the world's largest trading bloc. We exchange the largest volume of manufactured goods and services. We are also the top trading partner for 80 countries, including Turkey. By comparison, the US is the top trading partner for a little over 20 countries. Hence, the EU has a considerable leverage on the policies implemented by third countries by ensuring through the international trade channels that environmental, climate and wider sustainability concerns are addressed also by our partners. In this vein, trade liberalization plays a positive role in climate and environmental action. For instance, the trade and sustainable development chapters of the EU's bilateral trade agreements have a wide range of climate change related provisions. Going further, in the Green Deal adherence to Paris Agreement is proposed to become an essential element of future trade agreements. In this context, just as an example, the EU uses its modern trade agreements to promote climate-friendly policies, sustainable public procurement, and to remove barriers to trade and investment in renewable energies. One of the options to link trade policy with the European Green Deal is the carbon border adjustment mechanism. I know Turkish stakeholders are very curious about how it will work and affect their activities. While the precise design of the measure is yet to be defined, the mechanism will add to the range of already existing measures which help implement the EU main objective to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Its aim is to ensure that the price of imports reflect more accurately the carbon content, which will in turn ensure that the EU's green objectives are not undermined by production relocation to countries with less ambitious climate policies. The, the carbon border adjustment mechanism should apply to selected industries at risk of carbon leakage. The European Commission launched a consultation process on the mechanism in July, and the consultations closed on 28th October. We expect the measure to be ready in the second quarter of 2021. We will, of course, ensure the compatibility of the mechanism with WTO rules and other international commitments, as well as the complementarity and possible interaction with the emission trading system and provide the basis for further discussions with EU's partners. The numbers clearly show that Turkey and EU are important economic partners. I don't think I have to expand on the figures 
But Turkey is an important part of supply chains in Europe, particularly in motor vehicles, machinery, and textile. Hence, our convergence in climate policy is needed and it's inevitable in order to maintain the strong economic partnership. We expect that Turkey as a customs union partner and a candidate country to the EU would join EU's pathway for reducing global carbon emissions. How could the EU help Turkey to converge on these policies and work together? In terms of policy dialogue, we could do better and we are looking forward to the Turkish side to prove its readiness for constructive and open discussions. As you know, macroeconomic coordination in the EU is provided through a process called the European Semester. It allows EU countries to discuss the economic and budget plans and monitor progress at specific times through the year. The European Commission carries out a similar coordination exercise every year with the candidate countries, including Turkey, through the Economic Reform Programme. This year, the policy recommendations jointly accepted by the governments of the candidate country and the EU institutions focused on alleviating the social economic impact of the pandemic and on ensuring smooth transition to more structural reforms in view of fostering medium-term economic recovery. In this regard, the recovery is expected to be built upon a more sustainable and inclusive growth while also facilitating the green transition and the digital transformation. The European Commission highlights the importance of aligning the structural reform measures determined in the ERP as much as possible with the priorities of EU's Green Deal, while also contributing to the achievement of the United Nations SDGs. This is an area we continue our dialogue with, with the Turkish authorities on converging our microeconomic priorities and it is also a constitutes another platform for dialogue on the Green Deal. As for financial cooperation, Turkey can participate in the support framework of the Green Deal through its participation in the Horizon 2020 program. Pre-accession assistance, EPA, addresses similar and complementary priorities in the area of environment, energy, transport, agriculture, competitiveness and innovation, and this will continue in the future. Under the upcoming IPA 3 period, there will be a requirement that action funded through the IPA 3 envelope would contribute to the Union's effort to mainstream climate actions. We have been always receiving a large number of adequate, substantial and mature project proposals from the Turkish public and private beneficiaries. I'm sure this additional requirement will not limit the absorption capacity, but in fact add to the quality and diversity of financed projects. While concluding my remarks, I would like to say that post-COVID economic recovery and the transition to a sustainable, socially just, resilient and climate neutral economy should and definitely can go in hand, go hand in hand, both in, in the EU and in Turkey. Thank you very much for your attention.